to the court drop. This is where Eddie meet this is the program which we feature an editor every time we're here just to make sure that we tackle issues that are happening in our country and of course that are happening out of this particular country my name is Chawes Banda and today we have Mr. William Kumwembe he is the business news editor for times we want to look at the issue of the extended credit facility and of course the coming of the imf delegation to malawi to discuss this particular ecf my name is Chawes banda welcome to the program welcome uh, william to the program thank you thank sure. you so much Charles. the international monetary fund says there are still some issues that the government of malawi needs to iron out before signing the ecf the imf african department director mr abebe selassie <laughs> says the, the speed at which the ecf resumes depends on the pace that the Malawi government is going to take to resolve the legacy issues that we are having and that they inherited from the previous regime, the DPP administration. First things first, William, help us understand what do we mean when we talk about the extended credit facility? Right, as the name suggests, it's a credit facility. Uh, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, working with uh, precisely developing countries, yes. Malawi primarily inclusive, uh, to help cushion some of the challenges that countries of that nature are facing. Uh, you may recall Malawi, among other developing countries, have been riddled with a number of challenges. Mm -hmm. One of such is uh, our inability to make enough money in as far as uh, Forex is concerned. Yes. So the program is programmed or structured in a way that um, IMF would work with countries, uh, in this case we're talking of Malawi, uh, to generate a program whereby funds would be channeled in the country. Apart from that, it's a program that works as a signal, as a signal of confidence yes. uh, to other potential funders or potential development partners. So in a nutshell, as the name suggests, uh, Extended Credit Facility Program is a program through which the IMF, the Britain Roads Institution, work with uh, particular countries or governments mm -hmm. uh, to propel growth of their economies. All right. Now, from the time I started hearing about this particular thing, the extended credit facility, it seems uh, there comes a word, uh, we are either on track mm -hmm. in terms of it or we are off track. Mm -hmm. And whenever we are said to be off track in terms of this particular facility, it seems it is always a cause for worry. Why should we be worried when the ECF in terms of Malawi is off track? I said two things about what the ECF is all about, what the Extended Credit Facility Program is all about. Uh, first one, whereby the IMF brings in money. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, the, the, the most recent one, uh, when we were cancelling the, 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 the uh, Extended Credit Facility Program, yes. we had to forfeit or forego about mm -hmm. 70 million US dollars, yes. uh, which is a substantial amount, mm -hmm. uh, which when channeled into the economy, it helps boost uh, the balance of payment position. Mm -hmm. uh, when we talk of balance of payment, we, we are looking at the volume of forex that yes. as a country we have at a given period. Mm -hmm. You may recall recently there was a rebasing of, of, the, of GDP. The, the both the GDP and the BOP uh, position yes, yes. To, from 209 uh, million US dollars mm -hmm. uh, monthly expenditure or requirement to somewhere around 250 million US dollars. Yes. Uh, so when there is a program between the IMF and a country like Malawi, you are guaranteed to say at a certain point you would be given a trench, uh, some amount which would help uh, growth of, of, of the BOP. So uh, if I'm to look at this area alone, you would agree with me, Jawez, to say uh, there, there is always a challenge. Uh, in terms of forex in the country, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a perpetual problem. Exactly. We've we've had it. We've born in it. <laughs> we are growing in it. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to die in it. I would mm -hmm. rather find a solution exactly. to, to such a problem. We've had uh, problems whereby uh, there's been a mismatch between uh, supply and demand for forex. Why? Because of the economic position that we are at as an economy. So uh, coming in of the program such as uh, the ECF helps cushion the pressure that economists could face in as far as the availability of forex or BOP position is concerned. We may elaborate a little later on, on that area. An extension to that, um, if the IMF 
program is off track. Mm -hmm. It means there is no confidence in courts. Yes. Confidence from other potential development partners who could come to say, okay, because you have a, a program with the uh, IMF, here we are supporting Malawi. For example, uh, we may also ex explain it a little later. Uh, we have forgone about 300 million US dollars, which is money enough to spend for over a month if we had to go by the rebased BOP uh, position. So if there is no such forex trickling in, there is no confidence, that means uh, the economy seemed to be at an awkward position. You may recall for the past nine months, Jawezi, uh, there's been volatility, both in terms of Forex reserves position. Uh, I remember even hitting a record row of one, one, one month, uh, 1.5 months worth of imports, uh, because internationally, as required, we are supposed to have in excess of three months uh, worth of imports to, yes. to claim to say we are breathing, if I'm to use that word. Exactly. So we have been hovering around two months, 2.3 months worth of imports, uh, which is a volatile situation, uh, leading to volatility of the local currency because a few a few dollars are being chased by more quachas on the market. Volumes of quachas, uh, yes. which which gives pressure to to the local currency. Exactly. Uh, hence, we have noted even the local currency. Uh, losing ground against major trading currencies, in this particular case, the U.S. dollar, mm -hmm. which means if we are to trickle down the impact mm -hmm. uh, on the ground, it would mean inflationary. It would give pressure to the inflation trends, apart from maybe the tradition of food and, and food components. Yes. But the situation also would have an impact in as far as the, uh, the, 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 the economy is concerned. So it is, it is an issue that might be seen from a narrow perspective, but if we are to be frank enough, uh, it's an issue if unresolved do have a repercussion uh, to the economy at large. All right. Now, uh, William, I want to look at this uh, one thing. There was a time uh, Malawi was visited by the former managing director of the International Monetary Fund. Her name was, uh, oh, her name is Christine Lagarde. Christine Lagarde. She is now with the European Central Bank, yeah, yeah, sure. ECB mm -hmm. now. She was with the IMF, then she moved to the European Central Bank, and now the IMF is being headed by a certain woman we call uh, uh, Kristalina Georgieva. Mm -hmm. Now, Madam Christine Lagarde, which then, then, then 2012, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, 2012, if not 2013. Mm -hmm. When she came to Malawi, I had an interview with her. Then I asked them to say, people think that you poke your nose too much <laughs> into uh, the economies of Africa. We don't hear a lot when it comes to the Western world or perhaps in the other regions of the world. But when it comes to Africa, it seems you poke your nose too much into the economic of affairs of these particular countries. What is the mandate that you operate that gives you power and that, that particular uh, 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 strength to say you can go into economies and perhaps offer, uh, offer advice and say this you can, do, no, you can do, this you cannot do. Then this woman said, you know what, Charles, uh, the IMF has uh, three main mandates that we do. One, we go under the skin of economies to understand how these economies do operate. Secondly, we provide economic surveillance <laughs> to say this is what economies are supposed to be doing. And the third, which is the last one, which you, you hinted on, she said, we do lend credibility to say they act as a referee, to say mm -hmm. Malawi is a country you can do business with, Malawi is a country that you can trade with, Malawi is a country that if you want to have a partner, it is. That particular role, don't you think, is that which is now uh, perhaps uh, keeping us uh, uh, under a, a cup of problem to say when the, when, when the IMF coughs, Everyone catches the cord, you, if, I may, if I may say so. You, you, you have brought in uh, a critical issue, yes. Chawezi, uh, precisely on how IMF perceives us yes. as African countries mm. and how IMF perceives uh, the West, for example. Uh, truth be told, Chawezi, level of economies uh, do vary. Of course. Uh, because level of economies do vary. Uh, some economies, as big as they might be, they might wish to have a program with the IMF. Yes. But uh, the nature or the dictates might not uh, tally or might be not be equated with the dictates uh, on, on, on our side. Yes. Why am I saying so? You know, what has uh, made us dance to the IMF tune, or not only the IMF, what has made us dance to the Britain Woods Institution's tune yes. over and over again? is because of our capacity or the lack of it. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you are to be a little honest with yourself, Chawes, looking at the level of economy of Malawi, 
you would agree with me to say uh, we are predominantly dependent on aid. Yes. Now, when you're talking of aid, uh, IMF becomes uh, the signal, as they yes. say. Yes, yes. Uh, when IMF raises a, fla a flag, mm -hmm. that means everyone else would say no, no goes on. Yes. When IMF uh, raises a green, a green light, says yes. okay, proceed. Mm. So that is what has uh, made us as a country not to have a substantial say mm -hmm. on the on the fora or on the table of, of world debate in as far as uh, economic growth and development is concerned. Mm -hmm. So hence the IMF's position to say, okay, we only come in uh, to offer technical support as they use it. Mm -hmm. But if you are to be radical enough, Chavez, you agree with me to say much of what is called technical support is in conditions. Mm -hmm. It's in conditions that are outlined. Strings are always attached. Strings are always attached. Why? Because it's someone's money. Mm -hmm. uh, if it was our money, uh, it would have been a little easier for us to say, no, 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 we, we, are, we are comfortable. We might not need this program. Yes. But why ha have we reached even this far of trying to negotiate and say, okay, uh, you said we've made mistake A, B, C, D, X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. We are trying to rectify that problem and work towards rectifying it. That's what the uh, the finance minister said at a press on, on, on Monday. Yes. To say we are working tirelessly, by the way, yes. uh, to ensure that we rectify. Why do we... W because uh, my argument has always been, in the interim, we still need an IMF program. Yes. Because our problems are perpetual. Mm. Without the IMF program as it stands, uh, it would mean that three hundred thousand dollars. I mean, I mean, three hundred million dollars we're talking about would be no way to be. That, that's I mean. that's my next question, William. To say the finance minister during this particular presser did indicate to say Malawi is failing to access two hundred and forty-seven billion Malawi mm -hmm. an equivalent of three hundred uh, U.S. dollars. Three hundred million. Three hundred million dollars in terms of uh, development policy operation just because of this particular absence of the ECF. Mm -hmm. Is it that bad not to have this particular facility? It is, in the interim. Oh. I, I repeat the word interim because yes. uh, given a chance, Chavez, I would, I, would, I would bring forward my view to say what is the sustainable way mm -hmm. of, of uh, diverting or tilting away from uh, the, the heavy reliance on, exactly. on, on exactly. funders exactly. like the IMF. Yes. But as it stands now, uh, we should say we desperately need that support. Mm -hmm. Why? Because uh, I'll bring back the issue of our BOP position. Yes. It has been volatile. Mm -hmm. And that volatility has affected a number of factors in the economy. Mm -hmm. Why has our BOP position been volatile? We have an insatiable appetite mm -hmm. for imports. Mm -hmm. We are making a few dollars as an economy, but we are importing more as an economy. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means you and I, we have done everything that we've done. We've made, for argument purposes, 50 million US dollars. Now, having done that, we want to live uh, a life as if we can afford 100 million dollars worth of imports, yes. which is an awkward position. Mm -hmm. But we've lived in that since time immemorial. Uh, that makes us uh, to be at an awkward position. So because of that, that's why I say in the interim, we still need such an amount because when that an, um, an amount comes, it will cushion the pressure. Exactly. When the pressure is cushioned, it will help us focus on other areas, if at all we would. It will help us focus in, in, on other, other areas. That would help us move from the level that we are at to the next level. Nonetheless, mm -hmm. this is not a sustainable mm -hmm. way. What is a sustainable way? As a country, we need to find ways of shifting from aid, leaning towards trade. Yes. That has been always my argument. Mm -hmm. to say, if, if you want to have a say on the World Economic Forum, mm -hmm. all you need to do is show them that you can and you have. Mm -hmm. But we haven't shown them that as, as a country. We haven't shown them to say, okay, we are as competitive as everyone else. Mm -hmm. Why? Because we haven't uh, converted what we have to turn it to be a competitive edge. So what do we need as a country? If we want not to rely on the fund, if we no, want not to rely on the World Bank and other, other, other economies, uh, whereby when they cough, as we are saying, to mm -hmm. say we have to be moved, mm -hmm. even if when they, they sneeze we can be comfortable, mm -hmm. that would only be at the moment when you and I would be able to generate more dollars on our own without anyone pumping money into this country. At that point, that's when, in my view, would be able to say, okay, IMF has given us these conditions. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine and fair. 
I think we would have to focus on this area because one of the key things that might not have come uh, in the fall is the issue to do with uh, the subsidy program. Yes. You recall, uh, Chawai, prior to 2012, this was also the issue. Not only the subsidy program, but even uh, a choice to devalue the local currency. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember then former president, Bingo Mtari uh stood his ground to say, okay, you want us to do ABCD or not? You, you recall the repercussions. I do. Mm -hmm. you, you recall what Malawi was tending to. Yes. You recall how development partners seem not to support the country anymore mm -hmm. just because of one stance. Why? Because we had no capacity to sustain our view. So we might have a view, but if we can't fund our view, it becomes a challenge. That's the problem. That's the problem that we have revolved around for quite some time as a country. Mm -hmm. So until we move from heavy reliance on aid to heavy reliance on trade, that's the only moment when we have a say. All right. <clears throat> William, uh, among the issues the IMF wants resolved are uh, the huge public debt that we currently sit on, 4.7 trillion Malai Kwacha, if I'm not wrong. And again, the issue of uh, the misreporting by the former administration, DPP, and when it came to the issue of gross, uh, gross reserve assets and net international reserves for 2018 and 2019. Do you see the current administration able to resolve these legacy issues Be as demanded by the IMF? Before I see ability of the current administration or the Malawi government uh, ability to resolve those things, let's get a little backwards. Mm -hmm. As and to what happened. <laughs> let's, let's look at what happened. <laughs> because, uh, Chawiz, let's be frank. IMF would come in a country with conditions. Yes. One of such is to say, okay, Malawi, you have to ensure that you're not spending beyond your ceiling. But has that been the case here in Malawi? The obvious answer is no. Every time we have a budget, uh, whether with a deficit or not, but we spend beyond our ceiling. So to IMF, that's a lead frag. So, okay, we agreed, simple terms, uh, spend within your ceiling, and you're spending beyond your ceiling. Yes. That, therefore, it would be hard for us to come in with a program. Mm -hmm. Number two, manage, because the, the challenge of spending beyond our ceiling is emanating from our appetite for things that we could forego. Now, that might be history, but what is the cost? The cost is the government can't afford to raise all the resources enough to run the budget. What comes next? Let's go borrow. To who? Most definitely the, the local market. So the local market would pump money into the national budget through whatever means. Uh, so you'd see one of the key uh, indicators or conditions is manage your debt. Yes. So have we managed our debt as a country? Mm -hmm. The obvious answer is no. Another thing that uh, IMF wants is simple reporting. Uh, where simple reporting, I'm not trying to look at simplicity, but mm -hmm. to look at uh, just say what is on the ground. Exactly. Truthfully. Truthfully. Have we done that? in the year 2018, 2019 that, that, that we're talking That's the about. issue which is uh, uh, arising here. So the obvious answer is no, which puts us an, at an awkward position. So to say, even if it was an advocate, how would they argue the case? But uh, what was the intention of the DPP government by then when it lied to the International Monetary Fund, it, Monetary Fund in relation to the gross reserve assets? Why did it have to lie to the whole IMF we work on assumption, and the quick assumption that would come to anyone is to create an impression. Where you'd want to create an impression that things are working when they're not. That becomes a little problematic. Let's recall a little back. There was a time when Malawi adopted a zero deficit budget. Yes. Not, not so bad a budget. It's mm. an, an awesome direction that yes. this country yes. should have taken way, way back. At that time, Chawes, you may wish to recall, uh, what did we do as a country? We, won't, we went in town borrowing from commercial banks, feeding into the budget to create an impression that the budget was working. It failed, it flopped in a laboratory. Mm -hmm. uh, so you'd see why paint a wrong picture or a slightly different, I think if I'm to be a little diplomatic, yes. a slightly different picture than what's on the ground to create an impression. 
So when you're trying to create an impression that things are working when they're not, there'll be a time when, whether you like it or not, mm -hmm. you can contain it to an extent. Yes. But when the pressure boils, it bursts. Exactly. So this is where we are as a country. Mm -hmm. Cost of recklessness, if I'm yes. to use that word. Yes. Recklessness in, 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 in doing the obvious things. So that's where we're coming from as a country. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's the cost of, 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 of what we are paying now. Mm -hmm. Now the question is, does the government uh, have capacity to resolve these things? Yes, yes but it might take time. Mm -hmm. It will take time. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at the issue of date, for example, date is not going anywhere backwards. Let's just check the past 24 months or probably 24 months would be too long a period. Let's look at the past 12, 12 months, the financial year that just ended recently. You'd see that debt was still crawling mm -hmm. uh, faster to the pace that we were maybe pro, I mean, uh, pre hippic levels. Yes. So it means there would have to be some radical approaches if we are to close the, uh, the gaps as a country, mm -hmm. without which uh, ha handling these things would be a little hard. William, before we go for break, I want to look at the issue of uh, debt management because we're discussing here 4.7 trillion Malay Kwaja, which is one of the conditions upon which the IMF will have to resume the ECF. They are saying deal with this particular issue of debt. Government of Malawi has come up with the four-point plan to deal with debt and bring the levels of uh, debt to manageable or sustainable levels. So these four points are one, Government is calling for debt relief. Mm -hmm. They want to get uh, debt forgiveness from its uh, multilateral and the bilateral partners. Mm -hmm. When we talk about multilateral, we are, we are talking about the IMF, the African Development Bank, and the World Bank, perhaps. Now, when you talk about the bilateral partners, those that do lend to us, maybe we are talking about country to country, Britain, uh, USA, Canada, Japan, and the rest of the China, and the rest of the countries that do perhaps lend us a, a little something. Secondly, they are talking about enhancing public expenditure efficiency. This is also a very big thing which I am so doubtful to say the government of Malawi can afford to do. To manage public, public expenditure is also a mountain to climb. We are yet to see what they are going to do. And of course, I'll seek your opinion on this, on this particular issue. Thirdly, they are talking about strengthening domestic resource mobilization. Are we going to be able to uh, mobilize resources domestically without pinning someone, without punishing someone? Because already the tax base is quite narrow. And I don't know if this very same base is not going to get a little bit deeper from, from the very same people to be taxed. We are also yet to see on this one, and I'll get your opinion on this again. Lastly, they are talking about uh, enhancing external resource mobilization. And on the external resource mobilization, I hope it will also not be uh, the issue of borrowing. Let's start with calling for debt relief. Is this a wake-up idea? One at a time, as you're saying. Yes. Uh, but if I'm to put them in a package, I would rate them all as a daunting task. Yes. Uh, not easy. Not easy. It's not an easy. Uphill. Uh, you have to climb and you need a little more effort. Not exactly. only more effort, but to be vigilant as well. Yes. Let's examine the first option, mm. uh, debt relief. It has happened before. So if, if history is anything to go by, they say history repeats <laughs> itself. Of course. Uh, uh, prior to 2006, there was a call for Malawi, not only Malawi, but African countries and other developing countries across the world, uh, praying, I'll use that word, praying yes. for mercy mm. uh, from, from the funders to say, forgive us, uh, relieve of us this burden. What happened? They did. We got what we wanted. We got what we wanted. What did we make and out of it? That's, that's the next question I wanted to ask, to say, okay, did we draw any lessons from that? So to be frank, uh, I would say, it's possible to get a relief. Uh, if, if you could read between the lines of the IMF uh, uh, chief's views, it's possible. Yes. There is that possibility. Mm -hmm. But the question still stands to say, uh, did we draw any lessons from the 2006 or area uh, circumstance? Because as we speak now, the dead levels are gradually crawling back to that level yes. of, of the pre point. So to me, being forgiven of the dead is one thing. But our in our ability, because I remember even the the, the, the then finance minister Gurugonde 
said Malawi would have the capacity to be saving a substantial amount, I've, I've forgotten the amount, every month. Have we done that after the hippie claim? Have we done uh, that to say, okay, we've <coughs> been able to save this much and this much has gone to this area? No. What have we done instead? Gone back to, to, the, to the funders to say, give us a little more, give us a little more. So, yes, debt relief would come in, but after that, what next? That's right. the toughest question that we have to ask. Second one, enhancing public expenditure efficiency. Can that work? It's possible. Uh, mm -hmm. It has worked somewhere. Why not here? The appetite to spend. Why, why not here? Because the luxurious life that we live. That's the starting point. Because in a normal circumstance, Chawes, where you can't afford, you have to concede you can't afford. Mm. But where you're trying to live a luxurious life, if I'm to borrow your word, uh, beyond your capacity, then you become a slave. And the pursuit of uh, white elephant projects that don't bear any fruits. <laughs> I wouldn't call for it. Just, example. just, yes, exactly, call for it. <laughs> the pursuit of white elephant projects that don't have or indicate any evidence that they are productive in nature. That is the very same thing of uh, useless and reckless public expenditure. William, fill us in on that one. As a country, we need to make tough decisions. We need to make tough choices. Uh, choices and decisions that might be costly politically mm -hmm. but safe economically uh, for years we have failed to do that as a country we've taken money invested in things that uh, frankly uh, they are just uh, elevating us politically you understand what i'm saying taking us nowhere economically they don't make any sense so the moment we make that we, we swallow that hard pill to say okay as bitter as it might be we would have to still take that route I think it's possible. Another thing that we would have to, 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 to deal with as a country in, in trying to manage the public purse is deal with uh, issues of corruption and fraud. Tell me that's exactly, bad. Exactly. Uh, we have failed as a country to confront it as is. Mm -hmm. We failed to grab it by horns mm -hmm. and say we are dealing with you once and for all. Mm -hmm. We've given it a kid's growth. Mm -hmm. That's a big problem that we've had as a country. Uh, where there is issues of corruption, let's make sure that we are working to ensure that it never resurfaces. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, it, it's high time we give corruption a death sentence. Exactly. That's my view. Mm. Uh, only by doing two things. Number one, inculcating an honest and integrity culture. Yes. If we don't have this, it will be difficult for us as a country mm -hmm. to move on uh, to the next moving, level. Moving forward, you know, uh, uh, William, strengthening domestic resource mobilization. I'm smiling on this one. Strengthening domestic resource mobilization. It takes a lot. Are we not only thinking about taxes? Uh, if we are to think about taxes as a country, then let's uh, create more opportunities. Yes. Because if there is one cow and then we are all milking it for daily milk, then that becomes a problem. It can't feed the whole community. The community should devise a way of ensuring that there is more from which we can milk because that's where we get our dairy milk. So the problem has been as a country we haven't worked uh, rigorously uh, to find ways of sustaining the economy. Uh, revamping the private sector, if I'm to use that way, yes. uh, building a resilient and a strong private sector that would consume all those that are unemployed, yes. uh, creating um, a, a system whereby wealth creation is talk of the day, uh, dealing with the inequalities that exist. Any source figures indicate that over 50 52 percent of mm -hmm. Malawians are still living in poverty, yes. 22.6 of whom are living in dire poverty, if yes. I'm to use. they can't afford even a dollar yes. a day. Yes. So what needs to be done if we are to address this problem of uh, inability re to generate enough resources? Let's create an environment conducive for creating wealth. Mm -hmm. The moment we start creating wealth is the moment we start to say we can be able to generate more resources within. But the moment we don't do that, then it would be hard for us to generate the resources. The last point in the four-point plan to tame debt in the country is the enhancement of external resource mobilization. How does the government intend to do this? Will it work? It sounds general. <clears throat> it sounds general, but if I'm to narrow it, I would look at it from two perspectives. Yes. Number one, aid, mm -hmm. which to me remains unsustainable. Yes. Uh, because aid has killed a lot of uh, ideas. Aid has made a lot of uh, initiatives redundant. Mm -hmm. So if it's aid, then to what extent? If we don't have a cut-off cut point, then we have to re-examine the option. Yes. Number two would still be borrowing. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So borrowing borrowing externally would sound a little cheaper at some point because most of the of the loans that we access as a country are in nature concessional that do not tra attract as huge interest, interest yes. as as we would exactly. if we had to borrow domestic. They are always uh, below the market. But the tough below question, market prices. But the tough question still stands to say for what purpose? Mm -hmm. If we borrow to buy Panado, then it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. If we borrow to put up a road that would propel economic activity in a particular area, then that makes sense. So the question would be, if we are to generate resources from the external uh, sources, uh, what purpose would it serve? If it serves for consumption, then I would rather take it out. If it's for productivity enhancement, fine and fair. My last comment on this one, uh, William, is uh, have we tried uh, to look at how much we get from the diaspora in terms of uh, labor market remittances. The labor market channel remittances, your brothers, your sisters, your friends, and the, all those that are related to you, plying their trade in the diaspora. The, there is a certain report which says, when you look at, <clears throat> uh, when you look at uh, these remittances that get back to Africa from wherever these people are working or they're applying their trade, remittances are Bigger, they are a bigger amount, bigger than the ODA and FD, FDI put together. Official development assistance that perhaps we get from the Japanese, Jap Japanese, the Chinese, the Americans, the British. ODA put together with foreign direct investment. The remittances are huge. But the biggest challenge is the cost or the price at which the money gets here. We have got the uh, money transfer institutions that perhaps eat a huge percentage of the money. Someone may wish to send $100 from the U.S. to Malawi will get home maybe just $40. The rest, the middleman gets the money. That is a huge chunk. Have we done anything to alleviate this particular problem so that at least the money comes home and we negotiate with those that are uh, sending the money to Malawi and to Africa in general. First things first, creating first creating an enabling environment yes. remains one of the key things if we are to leverage on on the existing funds, poor funds that yes. come from the from the diaspora. You you've made mention or you have alluded to it from a general perspective. Yes. But if we are to narrow it, you'd agree with me to say uh, the the funds that come to Malawi might not be as uh, substantial. Or rather, we might not have accounted for it uh, to that extent. Mm -hmm. But still more, it's, it's, it's a source that we have to seriously look at. Yes. Uh, policy direction is one of the key things. What, direction, what policy direction do we have in place mm -hmm. to ensure that we attract? Because we have to make deliberate means mm -hmm. of attracting, attracting those resources yes. into the economy. Yes. Because uh, the advantage with that is unlike, unlike uh, aid, as you're putting it. Mm -hmm. Because if aid is to come, it's difficult to track its impact because by the time it comes in, a, in an economy, it would have uh, gone all over. But if you and I would have to say, uh, my brother is in the diaspora, yes. he's pumping money specifically for yes. a particular project, exactly. we are able to track, mm -hmm. to say, okay, this money came from this person. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the issue to do with uh, policy environment, what policies have we put in place that would uh, attract such exactly. resources exactly. to say, Bring more, bring more. Mm -hmm. How have we in incentivized them to say, okay, uh, if you do this, we'll mm -hmm. do this. So it's, it's, it's a game of trying to re-examine the, the policy environment to say, have we done enough as a country? Uh, if I'm to answer that question, I'll say no, we are here to do a lot. All right. It, uh, William, the last one is uh, some quarters have said the prescriptions that we get from the International Monetary Fund <laughs> sometimes do not help and favor us. Can we do without this particular arm of the Bretton Woods institutions. One size fits all remains one of the narrative put across when people are arguing against what IMF and other institutions will bring in an economy. Uh, the question is, could we do without them? Yes, but not in the interim. Mm -hmm. We still need them. We still need them in the interim because if, if you look at where we are, we would have to develop a plan that would take us out of dependence on them. Let me bring back the issue of, of, of zero deficit budget. Yeah, yes. I said it was a brilliant idea. Mm -hmm. If you look at the idea of zero deficit budget, where you say, okay, with the resources that we are going to generate, that's what we we'll spend, yes. precisely on point. Mm -hmm. But that should not be accidental. Yes. That's the cost that we paid. It was an accidental thing. Now, we want to get done or do away with uh, 
development partners that have been there for decades now, we can't do that overnight. Yes. That's why when the, uh, the, the UK says we are cutting our, uh, our support to Malawi by half, we cry mm -hmm. miserably mm -hmm. because we did not have a structured plan to say, at this point, we would want to walk out of dependence on... on, on, on and this on is the plan that we have. This is the plan. Do we have one in place? We don't. Let me give you an example of China. I think you and I might have talked about it before. China, several years ago, had plans to say, okay, we want by this point, our level of economy should be at this stage. Mm -hmm. The people that had those plans are no longer there in China. They are gone. Who are eating the fruits? The now generation. Yes. But China, as we speak, is among superpowers. Of course. If you check history of China, it was one of the poorest countries not so long away. Mm -hmm. What is it that they did that changed their narrative? just having a plan systematically mm -hmm. and following through the mm -hmm. plan until exactly. they get to the destination. Have we done enough to say, okay, uh, by 2063 we want to get there. What are we doing towards getting there? Because 2063, uh, Jawez, you and I, if we had to be there, at least we would be of age. Of course. To be frank. Of course. But the choices and the decisions that we make would have a bearing on the children that will come. Certainly. So the, the, the point is, as a country, we should wake up and start to think differently. To say, okay, we, somebody said, I, 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 just this week, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was a Catholic priest who said, you know what, we found a garden. Let's not leave a desert. Mm -hmm. So what we've been doing as a country is working towards creating a desert in a garden that we found, mm -hmm. which is pathetic. Mm -hmm. All right. I will also quote what uh, Mr. Barack Obama said. He said, lasting prosperity does not come from what a nation consumes, mm -hmm. but what it produces and, and the investment it makes in its infrastructure and its people. Was he saying the truth? On point. All right. On point. You know, when you talk of concept of sustainability, yes, concept of sustainability evolves around... Uh, meeting the needs of today mm -hmm. without compromising the future obligation. Yes. That's as it is. It, it is in line, the, the thinking of Barack Obama is in line with the concept of sustainability. Sure. Let's, let's meet what the needs of today are. Mm -hmm. But in doing so, mm -hmm. let's not compromise what could uh, the future generation want. All right. In other words, as they say, let's, let's live uh, the world in a more better way than we found it. We take a very short break. William will be back. All right, I'm talking to William Kumembe, the business news editor here at Times. We'll be back shortly with the program. Welcome back to the Code Drone. This is where editors meet. And today I have William Kumembe helping us to discuss matters that have fallen before us in terms of the extended credit facility. We just shift a little bit to the international segment, William. We want to look at the issue which is making headlines internationally. The Pandora Papers. The Pandora Papers is a leak of 12 million documents that reveals hidden wealth tax avoidance, and in some cases, money laundering by some of the world's rich and powerful. More than 600 journalists in 117 countries have been trolling through files from 14 sources. This data was obtained by the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists in Washington, D.C., which has been working with more than 140 media organizations on this particular biggest ever global investigation. Some of the names being mentioned in these papers, William, are King of Jordan, mm -hmm. uh, Abdullah II, former UK Prime Minister Tony Blair, Gabon's President Ali Bongo, and uh, Congo Brazzaville President Denis Sassungweso, and our very own uh, well-known person, Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta. Malawi has not been mentioned <laughs> anywhere. Not a single leader from Malawi has been mentioned. How have we been spared? Are we smart? <laughs> you're smiling. <laughs> laughing, Martha. Oh, you're laughing. Have we <laughs> been spared? Have we been spared? No. I, I wouldn't want to believe that. Are we I, smart? I wouldn't want to believe that. <laughs> as much as the, the patriotic person in me would tell me, no, 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 say we are smart. But yes. Honestly, if you 
if you had to go by internal affairs, you'd see we, we, yes. we have a lot that we, we leave a lot to be desired. Mm -hmm. But the question remains to say, uh, why have we been spared? It's not a matter of being spared. Yes. Uh, probably the, 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 the thing would be uh, the volume, probably. Yes. The volume could be, on an assumption basis, yes, negligible. Yes, yes. It, make, say, it, okay, makes sense. Uh, it makes sense. The volume could be negligible. That we Maybe can't. we did not hit the threshold that exactly. was being considered. We, in other words, we are not as competitive <laughs> enough in, in that category, if I'm to, to use that phrase. <laughs> yes. So probably that could be one of the key reasons that uh, we, are, we are spared, if, if I'm to borrow your word. Yes. But essentially, we're not as spared. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you zero in on what has been happening on the local scene, mm -hmm. uh, to say how people... We've had cases whereby uh, people would have uh, dubious offshore accounts. Yes. Uh, it's, not, yes. It's, not, it's not a strange thing. Uh, both business people, politicians, yes. Yes. people close to the power... So to say we have been spared that there is nothing of that sort happening in their country, I wouldn't want to believe that. But probably the, the argument would be uh, the volume or the magnitude mm -hmm. might be negligible. All right. Some things being mentioned are secret wealth and properties. Mr. Tony Blair, for example, uh, is reported to have saved over £312,000 stamp duty in property deals. Uhuru Kenyatta of Kenya and his family are linked to 13 offshore accounts, you, offshore companies you have just mentioned, offshore uh, companies, but he said he would respond when he's back from his state visit somewhere. Do these things really happen, William? They do. They do, Jawes. It's not, it's not like uh, something that is out of this world. It's not something that I would call fantasy. Yes. They do happen. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had cases of, you know, the challenge is there are two things that are dangerous. Mm -hmm. Uh, more money and more power. Yes. Because uh, when it reaches that level, uh, you want to sustain yourself at that level. Mm -hmm. and, and the cost is you want to do <coughs> almost anything that would keep you afloat. Yes. So, from a general perspective, without, without maybe mentioning particular names, uh, you, you've seen people um, paying a cost of trying to remain afloat yes so it's it's a thing that has happened i want to give another example here according to the bbc <clears throat> they are saying mr Uhuru kenyatta uh, the documents do show that a foundation called vares was set up in 2003 in panama naming mr kenyatta's mother ngina as the first benefactor and kenya's leader as the second benefactor who would inherit after the death of the mother the assets of the foundation and their value are known. This, like I said, is according to the BBC. What does this mean? Was this particular foundation simply registered in the name of the mother, just using her, when in essence the foundation belongs to Uhuru Kenyatta? <laughs> that, 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 that's, that remains my point. The, the, the cost she, of such she, is... She's 88, by the way, and it was registered in her name. In her name. Uh, the cost of such is that, uh, <laughs> minus the report, the rest could be, uh, minus the detail in the report, Yes. the rest could be speculative. But if we are serious enough as, as a continent, as, as, as people, uh, the next thing we'll do is uh, dig deep into the, the, the things to find clearly. If there is uh, wrongdoing, mm -hmm. uh, let investigations bring forward the wrongdoing. Of course, of course. If there is no wrongdoing, mm -hmm. uh, we push the burden of proof, as, exactly, as, exactly. as you would say. To In court. Say, yeah. Yes. We push the burden of proof to say, proof to us that mm. you didn't. On the accuser, yeah. yes. Exactly. All that right. you didn't do anything uh, that is in contrast to the legal provisions or mm -hmm. requirements. All right. In general, William, what are the lessons that we can draw that the rich, the powerful, the connected continue perhaps uh, on, uh, on, on alleged basis? They continue maybe uh, to get wealthier by the passing of each particular day. What are the lessons that can be drawn from a thing of this particular nature, the Pandora Papers? The biggest challenge is we, in whatever we do, create uh, disparities, yes. inequalities. Yes. And this is costly because in a world of uh, whatever amount of people, whatever number of people, uh, only 20% celebrating the wealth uh, at the expense of, tw I mean, 80%. Not fair. It becomes a little problematic. And the most unfortunate thing is that most of them are in nature politicians. Yes. Uh, if we are to bring <coughs> the African context in the equation, mm -hmm. you'd agree with me to say 
uh, what politicians mostly do is dangle a color. Yes. You keep following them just because of the color. Yes. They would want to ensure that this is a general generalized uh, session. Mm -hmm. They would want to dance, you to dance to their tune, yes. no matter what. The moment you show that you can, uh, is the moment you become enemies. William, let's finish the program for today with the newsroom segment. We all know what happened the, a couple of days ago. There was a social media outage on Monday for six hours or so following a blackout of Facebook platforms <clears throat> of WhatsApp, Facebook, and Instagram. Mm -hmm. It simply appeared as if the world had crumbled on us as people could not communicate with each other. Share me in 30 seconds, your experience of this particular day when this happened? Two things happened. <laughs> uh, number one, I felt disconnected from the whole world. Exactly. Number two, I switched off my phone and on uh, between, I mean, between six and nine, mm -hmm. about five times. Mm -hmm. Number three. Uh, and you couldn't believe I the couldn't outcome. I couldn't believe the outcome. That <laughs> I thought my phone was a problem. Exactly. Later on, I then said probably it's my network, which sometimes misbehaves mm -hmm. then i was like probably it's my network mm -hmm. so quickly what i did i checked my data if i had enough data <laughs> bundles uh secondly i called a friend in lilongwe and I, I i i use one network i called a friend of mine who uses another network in lilongwe maybe i was thinking maybe it is the geography which is trying to do the tricks so i had to call someone in lilongwe just to understand what was happening he said no we're also having the same problem here in lilongwe and then later on we got it on bbc to say it was a global outage now but that was after exactly getting it from because i couldn't even access the news are you sure <laughs> on, on, on i got it on radio i got at it on least, radio at least better because exactly i got the option i was like yes. i was like okay it's it's late i tried to check uh, on everyone's line mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. the, within home said okay it's mm -hmm. late i mean uh, let me go to sleep is it news is it time that we accepted that mr mark zuckerberg <laughs> controls the world in terms of communication is it time to accept L let's face it mm. uh the world the world is being driven by the innovative the, the boy is big the boy is big uh, he he has brought to the world a thing that we've never seen exactly and even governments mm. you check what mm. happened between mm. uh, those six hours yes even governments could have been mm. they were so that they were at, indisposed if i'm to use that word held yes. at runs yes yes so frankly mm. uh, Chawezi, the guy is in control of, of course of course wow uh william for those six hours only it is reported that about six billion dollars was lost in advertising revenue and the plummeting of facebook shares on the wall street it seems social media is big business do we realize this here at all yeah we do uh we do if we don't then i think it would be naive we accept we agree uh that uh the the ball game has changed mm -hmm. the, the the setup has changed mm -hmm. the way things are done uh have changed yes so yes facebook uh, the social media in in general has changed the whole landscape mm -hmm. the way we looked at things 10 years ago 20 years ago yes. even even with the coming in of social network companies have collapsed of course and others have thrived mm -hmm. so you can tell that uh, it has changed the whole narrative. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I understand that uh, some of our publications, online publications, are Facebook page, are, are Facebook based, mm -hmm. where media organizations also affected with this particular Obviously, outage. Blackout of six week. I mean six six hours. Yes, always is not is not because you know why where we are as it stands. Uh, you you'd agree with me to say at the tip of your finger yes. you have all the information. Of course. So, for six hours with no information, mm -hmm. and then someone banks on that platform to make money. Mm -hmm. It has a cost. Of course. It has a repercussion. I heard Mr. Bramford Zulani, president of the ICT Association of Malawi, saying what happened must be a wake-up call for Africa in general, and Malawi particularly, to develop our own platforms. Are we able to do this? <laughs> Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But the question is when. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. When and how? Without Facebook, can we survive, William? Survival is subjective. Mm. Uh, if you talk of survival without, we've we've lived without Facebook before. Times have changed, uh, my time, brother. Times have changed, but if you talk of can we survive, to mm. what extent remains mm -hmm. the question to All say. Right. Uh, when you talk of can we survive, to what extent? Yes. But if I'm to 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 face your question head on, I would say. It's tough. Yes. It's tough to uh, 
keep ourselves afloat without mm -hmm. which because if you're talking of six hours mm -hmm. i saw panic yes i saw we, we are people in a in a home and then you could sense some level of panic to mm -hmm. say something is not right mm -hmm. so that just shows to say facebook or social media has come and has come to change the approach some governments have used the closing of social media sites as a way to muzzle dissenting views an effective way it's unfortunate it's never been effective okay it has worked maybe uh, to save their selfish motives yes. but to me stand, whoever stands not fair the, not democratic not, exactly whoever stands on the way to freedom of expression yes uh, is in the wrong mm -hmm. and before they realize it uh, the huge vehicle of the masses yes would swipe them out all right william kumwembe the business times editor here at times thank you very much thank you so much my brother for coming in so handy <coughs> with responses to the program thank you so much all the best it. that's william kumwembe there helping us understand some of the things that we had topical in this particular program my name is chawes banda until next time when the quadron is back where editors meet i'm just saying keep watching times and enjoy the rest of our programs goodbye It's back, it's bigger, it's better. Pre-Mother's Day Gospel Concert.